Body Language Intelligence for Photographers. Today, we'll talk about the history of body language, how gestural intelligence leads to emotional intelligence, and the three rules for observing body language. And as a bonus, you're gonna get some info about cognitive dissonance. The science of body language. Reading people's body language and facial expressions isn't a trick we learn or a new fashionable trend. It's a language that's enabled us to survive hundreds of thousands of years. It's a true art that when mastered and applied correctly, flips people's lives around. Before the Phoenicians invented the alphabet and gifted it to the Greeks, where the Latin language developed, we communicated via gestures and non-verbal expressions. This art of knowing still resides within us, whether we're aware of it or not. The history of body language. The primary language of communication throughout history is non-verbal. We're not referring here to modern sign language, but the use of hands, feet, body, and face in communication resulting in formation of society and eventually language. Nonverbal communication is the oldest and most effective way of surviving in the wild or civil society. Our genetic potential for linguistic creativity was unleashed with the development of a community and public trust. Challenges arose when we started speaking due to the ready availability of lies. No wonder we, modern humans, believe actions speak louder than words. Scientists have estimated that humans started to utter words less than 100,000 years ago, around the time Homo sapiens evolved. However, modern language as we know it, the alphabet, was invented by the Phoenicians during the 11th century BC. This info is based on early foundation laid by the Egyptians around 1800 and 1900 BC. The Greeks adopted the alphabets when King Cadmus introduced it to the Greeks in the early 8th century BC. Eventually, the Romans developed the alphabet into Latin, and the rest is history. Before we had verbal language, we mastered nonverbal communication to better decode the world around us. It was a matter of survival, life or death. Before this elevation of civilization, we only communicated via gesticulation. We read each other's body language. Many, many unspoken words and intentions were perceived via gestural language. If we think about it, Verbal language has been around for a really short time since we as homo sapiens have been around for almost 200,000 years. Gestural intelligence. Gestural intelligence is the expression of nonverbal communication through conscious and subconscious gestures, including facial twitches and expressions. We start expressing ourselves through bodily reaction as soon as we're out of the womb. Before we develop language skills, we communicate nonverbally. After all, Without speaking a word, infants communicate to their parents when they're feeling hungry, full, sleepy, or playful. Aside from communicating through crying, cooing, and squealing, babies communicate through facial expressions like eye contact, smiling, and grimacing. They also use gestures and body movements, such as moving their legs in excitement or distress. Gestural language is universal. It's a hidden language. Many people use it to communicate better. We can learn how to express our confidence or lack thereof through body language by auditing our bodies. Once we're aware, we can change how we feel and control the flow of hormones into our bodies. The first person who's influenced by our nonverbal communication is ourselves. From our thoughts to our physiology, gestural intelligence is the key to confidence, personal power and happiness. It's not by chance that social scientists have spent countless hours analyzing our body language and dissecting the gestures that give or take away our power. Have you noticed how when powerful people like world leaders or decorated athletes they walk, other people walk a step or half a step behind them? One way the FBI learns who's in charge during an operation is by watching who walks in front and how others carry themselves around them. Powerful people tend to take up more space. It's easy for them to open up because they feel powerful, because they are. Some body language gestures are universal, not only among humans, but also among other animals. An example is the triumph gesture, like the open arms, hands, chest, chin up, raised arms, open palms, and the face sometimes showing aggression. This triumphant gesture is a universal one through among all cultures and primate kingdoms. Other primates are known to express dominance and power through this movement as well. The science of body language helps us achieve success, retain goals, master situation, and get the results we aim to achieve. 
Gestural intelligence leads to emotional intelligence. William James, a philosopher and psychologist from the 1842 to 1910, he said, whenever two people meet, there are really six people present. There is each man as he sees himself, and each man as the other person sees him, and each man as he really is. Truly understanding this quote has enabled me to fathom why my clients get extremely emotional when they see or view some of the portraits that we shoot. Occasionally, a version of themselves that they either aren't aware of or try to suppress pops up. When capturing a portrait, we photographers have the privilege of sometimes capturing one's tenderness and concerns by accident. We capture prejudice, distress, desires, we even capture arrogance. And sometimes we capture something that always breaks my heart. We capture hopelessness. Oftentimes, people choose the wrong comfortable pose because they're nervous. For example, one of the first poses that some of my headshot clients adopt is the cross arm pose. It's a very comforting pose, and when you're nervous, it makes you a little bit guarded because you're trying to protect yourself, right? Think about the times you're having fun with your friends. Do you cross your arms like this? I mean, is that something that makes you feel relaxed? Of course not. We only fold them when we're defensive or aren't ready to share ourselves with the world. Or it's not necessarily a bad pose, but does it convey the message that you want to share when you decide to take your headshot or get your portrait done? I mean, especially when you hide the fingers. Mm. It means you're not approachable. No incoming communication nor outgoing communication is welcome. This is what this pose means, especially when you're hiding the fingers. When the arms are folded, it's translated as a negative attitude. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen the crossed arms and headshots of CEOs or politicians who didn't realize how negative it was. In fact, and it's an inferior pose, even more when someone's arms are, are, are folded and reinforced by clenched fist or tight upper lip. I mean, I know this isn't only evident signs of defensiveness, but also a clear sign of hostility. You know, it's not cool. Three rules for observing body language. There are three rules we should know right off the bat if we're interested in being more gesturally intelligent. Knowing these timeless rules will help us connect better to people because it will make us more intuitive to anticipate their next move. This knowledge will set us apart in any photo shoot, social setting, and career event. Being gesturally intelligent will expand your social intelligence because you're literally learning to decode a new language. Although we already use this language to communicate, it's a language we read subconsciously. We've forgotten how to speak it or read it intentionally. With that said, below are the three rules to follow when attempting to read someone's body language. Rule number one, read gestures in clusters. Sometimes someone might itch their nose because they're really dry and itchy and it's not because they're lying or trying to hide something from us. A woman might caress her neck because her hair is itching and it's not because she's really interested in the man she's talking to. Someone might cross their arms and hug themselves, not because they lack confidence, but it's a little bit cold in here and they're not really intolerant to our ideas. They're just simply cold, right? Like this hugging ourselves. Not everybody is on the same level of comfort with temperature. Rule number two, consider the environment. A stressful job interview isn't as laid back as hanging out with your buddies. Some people's palms sweat stressfully at job interviews, considering it's a life-changing event. Other might seem a little bit more laid back, but when you look a little bit closer, you'll see the back is stiff and their feet are moving quickly. <laughs> it's due to stress. When we're faced with a question we don't want to answer fully, or when we don't necessarily want to share certain information, we'll suddenly shift our posture. For example, if someone's asking us about our last relationship, why didn't it last? It's common knowledge that it's not courteous to badmouth our exes, whether they broke up with us or we broke up with them. It's never comfortable to explain a failed re relationship, right? As a result, the answer is immediately defensive. So they might shift in their seat, change their hips, or position their knees differently, or even touch their neck. This isn't before they're preparing to lie, 
but maybe just there's no appropriate way to share how their ex batted their mailbox right after a fight. And that's why they broke up. Rule number three, follow your initial gut feeling gracefully until proven wrong. Typically, our subconscious mind takes the job of analyzing body language. When our conscious mind starts steering the wheel and overthinking the body language and the gestures in front of us, we start getting an affirmation of every preconceived fearful thought that we ever crossed our mind. It's no good. We usually see what we expect to see and get distracted by the affirmation of the individual moves that might have different meanings. That's why it's important to see movements in clusters. As I mentioned, people are thinking different thoughts than you. A stressed out date might be doing so because they're experiencing embarrassing bodily pain. Or, I mean, you gotta leave a margin for error. You gotta guard yourself at the same time, but you gotta take things in cluster. Have you ever had a great meeting with someone, but you had a gut feeling that something was off? This is your brain reading body language and observing information that doesn't match the conversation. Women are naturally much better than men in reading nonverbal communication. Something important to consider, especially when it comes to trusting your gut, is cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. Dissonance is inconsistency, right? Inconsistency. When we hold to different well-defined yet inconsistent thoughts, we experience discomfort and emotional unrest in our bodies. This also applies to a behavior or action that contradicts our true selves and beliefs or values. Cognitive dissonance is the discomfort we experience when we hold two or more conflicting cognitions, which can be ideas, beliefs, or emotional values. Leon Festinger wrote a book about this topic and outlined a clear theory of cognitive dissonance and how some of us cope with it. For example, if someone is forced to publicly deliver a statement that doesn't align with their values or beliefs, this emotional comfort can lead to an alteration in our attitude, leading to involuntary facial and body gestures, and even sometimes words, and we call it the Freudian slip, right? Our body produces this adjustment naturally and instinctively to reduce the discomfort we feel. We always know when we're inconsistent and in an act of breaking harmony between our thoughts and our words. But even when we utter lies, our body speaks the truth. We naturally seek balance and harmony. And when we're in a difficult situation, our mind moves us involuntarily to re-establish balance. A couple of common body gestures associated with cognitive dissonance are interlocking the fingers over the knees and crossing the ankles. This move, the, these nonverbal dynamics are a clear indication of anxiety. First, interlocking the fingers over the knee and sometimes bringing the chest closer to the knee, which makes us smaller, is a clear indication of two conflicting feelings and hesitation about acting on a feeling or thought or not. If we pause for a second to think about it, we can wonder what's wrong with dissonance. Why do we need to resolve these conflicting thoughts? Incredibly, we feel physical discomfort when we have cognitive dissonance. Why is that? Why is it a big deal? Well, the most obvious explanation is that since our mind's job is to restore balance and consistency, one of the ways to rebalance itself is to express negative thoughts through the most understood language, the body language. When we have emotional or cognitive conflict, we start experiencing strong body moves that we didn't plan to exhibit. We don't even think about it as we do it. When I find myself in an odd body gesture, I start collecting my thoughts and I take control of my body by aligning our, my thoughts and my gestures. As an example, a smoker realizes that smoking is truly harmful to their body. However, there's still a smoker with no plans to quit. And to restore balance to their thoughts, his or her mind convinces them that smoking isn't that bad because someone well in their 90s are cancer free and they have healthy lungs. I mean, therefore, all of the myth about smoking doesn't apply to them. This is the clear, like, how, the poster child of our mind tricking us into believing something that's against our 
best judgment. As you can see, nonverbal communication through body language is more essential in communicating than verbal con conversations. Understanding and interpreting gestural language will help you with your skills as a photographer, and it will make you a more understanding person in general. Emotions are a complex phenomena, leading to a wide range of poses and gestures. In the next chapter of this series, we'll discuss how this connection between emotions and body language, how it works. So you'll understand why it's necessary to be constantly positive and comforting with your clients. If you like this video, please like and follow and subscribe to uh, stay with us throughout this series.